Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes and welcome to my Flute Basics video on YouTube. Today we're going to focus ourselves exclusively on the head joint of the flute and this is a concert flute head joint. Now most of you out there who's interested in the flute I assume will be playing the C flute which is called the concert flute and you'll have a head joint with a lip plate and an embouchure hole on it. This is where the sound all starts on the flute and it's the absolute critical part um, of flute tone production. Before we talk straight about flute tone production, I'm just a bit interested in, in giving you a very quick summary of musical tone production in general. So if we look at a stringed instrument, this is a beautiful little Fender electric ukulele. It's a stringed instrument and you can see as I strike any of those strings and the string vibrates, as the string is excited into motion, the vibrations of the string, depending on how tight or loose it is and depending on where I'm fretting the instrument, how short or long it is, creates the musical sounds that we associate, in this case, with a ukulele. So it's very visual. Sound is all about vibrations, sound waves. If we look at another very common instrument family, that is the single reed instrument family. In this case, I've got an alto saxophone mouthpiece, ligature and reed, and an alto saxophone neck. If I put that mouthpiece in my mouth and just blow air into the mouthpiece, we get the sound of the fundamental sound of an alto saxophone. Now I can't, unlike the ukulele, I can't change the pitch of that sound very much at all. I can bend that note down a little bit and up even less. Uh, I can't really play a song on that mouthpiece and read. Uh, if I play a song like Mary Had a Little Lamb on this, it would sound like this. Did you pick it? No, but if you imagine... Da 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 So that I couldn't change the pitch on the saxophone mouthpiece, but I could play the rhythm of the song. Another big family of musical instruments is the brass family. So the trumpets and the trombones and the euphoniums and the French horns and the flugel horns and, and all of those instruments, any instrument played with a cup mouthpiece. So a circular mouthpiece that sits on the lips um, and the sound of the brass instruments involve our lips in one way or another vibrating. So if I put this trumpet mouthpiece and this hold is just like the neck of an alto sax, it just lengthens the mouthpiece a little bit and play a song like this. <laughs> On that mouthpiece, I can change the pitch and I can play tunes. Now, I'm definitely not saying that's how you play the trumpet. I'm just giving a demonstration of playing a trumpet mouthpiece where the tone, the actual notes and the pitch are being created not by the vibration of a string, but by the vibration of the human lips. If we go back to our flute now, how is the sound that we hear of the flute produced in comparison to the stringed instruments, the reed instruments, or the brass instruments? Well, entirely differently. For one, we don't see anything vibrate, and we most definitely do not vibrate our lips in any way, shape, or form when we're playing the flute. We simply blow air across the opening, the embouchure hole, and depending on whether we've got that uh, our hand against the open end, if we close the, the pipe completely, we'll get that low note, which is approximately an A in concert pitch. Now, if we open the, the pipe up, we get a note that's not quite an octave higher. It's somewhere between G sharp and the A. We can bend that note up to be a B and A. We're not into that today. We're simply wanting to get the feel. We're not that worried about what the pitches are of the low note and the higher note as we open and close 
the pipe. So I'll just do that again. If you get your flute head joint, seal the end of the pipe by just pushing it lightly against the palm of your hand. Bring the head joint to below your lips and blow across the hole. You'll get a note that should be somewhere around about an A if you put your tuner on or hit a piano. Or if you listen to me play somewhere around that pitch. You take your hand away, you'll get a note up there around G sharp, almost an octave higher. And the feel will be slightly different. There will be a little slight change in resistance between the lower note and the higher note. Very minor change in resistance. By resistance I mean the feel as you blow across that pipe. And it's a bit like that when you play the flute. If you're playing the lowest note on the flute, it will feel pretty much like this. And as you play in the second and third register in the flute, it will feel more like this. Okay. So I just want to draw a quick comparison to you. One of the things is I've been a multi-instrumentalist all my life. The flute is just one of an absolute handful of instruments that I play, all different types. Um, and many people, you know, when I was growing up said, well, you can't, you can't play the flute and the clarinet or the flute and the saxophone or, you know, or the, or the flute and any brass instruments. You just can't do it. It's physically impossible. Um, if anyone's aware of the Australian jazz legend James Morrison, um, particularly his album Snappy 2, where he plays every instrument in a big band, except for the drums, um, I'd, I'd hasten to say I think the advice I got when I was a child was a little bit mis misguided. I just want to show you some something, how similar the embouchures are for reed instruments. Okay, if I form my face to play the saxophone and then take the mouthpiece out. The shape of the lips when the mouthpiece isn't in there is very, very close. To what the shape is when you play the flute. And, and surprisingly, it's similar on the brass instruments too. So the corners of our mouth, in the case of a saxophone where the lips meet the edge of the mouthpiece, have to be strong and you have to build up strength in the corners of your, not the corners here, not the smiling corners, but where the lips seal to allow the opening. And the opening for the flute is an oval shape, not a whistle. We don't whistle our way. We don't have a, a drinking straw hole in the middle of our lips to play the flute. It's As I said, it's very similar to if you take a saxophone mouthpiece out of your mouth and where the mouthpiece tip goes in, where the width of that opening of the mouthpiece is on your saxophone, well, in many ways, that's about the opening you have when you play the flute. Okay, so I just want to dispel any um, myths or rumours out there that certainly we don't whistle when we play the flute. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just air gently passing out of, on the flute, quite a sizable opening in your lips, but an elongated opening, not a circle. Okay, so a good exercise to do is to get your trusty metronome, Set it on 60 beats a minute, like that, and try and hold, sustain the low note for, say, four counts, and then the high note for four counts. You can take a breath in between, like this, two, three, four. You can make up a whole range of exercises. So you can, with your metronome at 60 beats a minute, you can play crotchets or one beat notes 
along with your metronome going low to high. And so on. Quavers, you can alternate them. The big thing is, is to make the head joint of your flute your friend. Now, I'm not saying you need to spend half an hour doing this every day. And in fact, if you do, you'll find your, your sound will get worse on the flute. You'll get a smaller sound on the flute than if you just do maybe five minutes of that sort of practice every day. It's a great way to warm up. Don't overdo it. Um, it's a great way to center your sound and to focus on the finesse parts of tonguing, to really hear what your tonguing sounds like. Whether you're double tonguing or, or you know, triple tonguing. Whatever it is that you're working on, bring it back, get rid of the flute and bring it back just to the head joint and I think you'll be really pleasantly surprised at how a little bit of practice with the head joint can go a long way in improving your fundamental tone, the ease of production, of note production on the flute, and the clarity of your articulation. I hope some of that has been of interest and, and help to you. If you've got any questions on flute basics, feel free to email me at any time, info at brianhayes.biz, that's dot B-I-Z, and my website is www.brianhayes.biz. More than happy to answer any queries from genuinely um, interested flute students or players anywhere in the world. Okay, so long for now.